Hello and welcome just a family. This is giving you something to talk about or just a like live TV as I like to call it. I'm your host, Melissa Kretschler. I'm an identity coach, spiritual teacher, business mentor, as well as creator and founder of not only just live TV, but also the Women Supporting Women Can Network. Today's episode has been sponsored by True North Tribe which is offering you, and I'm just pulling it up, sorry, I usually have that already, is offering you the ability to download Musings of the Audacious, which is uh, day one of the course. Um, I'm excited to to hear about that. Um, so I'm going to let our guests speak or talk about that in a moment. Um, today we're going to be talking about manifestation, what it is, how to do it, all of the fun stuff that goes with manifestation. I think that for myself, um, I'm not even going to get into that yet. We'll we'll get into that in a shortly. But for anybody watching or catching the replay, please like, share, and follow. Join our newsletter at justalivetv.com. Find us at Just Alive TV across multiple social media platforms and get involved with the show. You want to talk about what we're talking about, get involved in the comments. Or if you'd like to see a topic featured, join us. We're always interested in what you have to say. So that's why it's called giving you something to talk about. All right. I'm going to hand it over to Caroline. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I am Caroline Wong from True North Tribe and super excited to be here today. Um, looking forward to the conversation and just, I don't know, chatting it up with Melissa. So quickly tell us a little bit about uh, Musings of the Audacious. I'd like to know. I'd like to know more about that. So Musings of the Audacious um, came from Somebody was, I don't know, I was watching something and somebody was throwing around the word audacious and they were talking about how when we hear the word audacious, I think our brain automatically goes to that gaudy, you know, how, you know, audacious of them to think that they can do whatever X, Y, Z. And the more I really thought about the word audacious, it really made me think, well, if we are, if we are going to step into that version of ourselves that requires these massive changes and wanting to manifest whatever it is that we're trying to manifest, you need to go out and be audacious. You need to go out and be bold. You need to go out and be that, that just different version of yourself that's going to require those shifts and changes within your life. And so I thought to myself, well, you know what? Musings of the Audacious. I'm just going to create this mini audio course. It's four parts. It has a, a workbook that goes with it that I created that you can use in, in, you know, pairing with the listening to the audios. And I think it's a pretty, it's just an introductory to kind of how I think and how I um, believe that if you're really looking to make these shifts and changes in your life, you really need to be audacious about it. You can't just sit back and be like, oh, you know, I think I'm just going to do this today. You've got to be bold about it and, and really willing to live that, that extra part of yourself that it's going to take. So that's musings of the audacious. I like that. I, I really like that. And some of that goes hand in hand with what we're talking about today. We're talking about manifestation. Now, I've been in manifestation groups, I've followed manifestation um, practitioners, and I love manifestation. I absolutely do. I'm, I Manifestation is a wonderful thing, but I became disillusioned with it, with, with some people along my own journey. And I think that came down to thinking that, you know, putting manifestation with the law of attraction with positive, you know, toxic positivity or the positivity movement, as I call it, right. um, it, it became a thing where you would just put it out there and leave it. Or, you know, there are people absolutely master man, manifest, master manifestors who can just put it out into the universe, forget about it. And it happens. Right. Mm -hmm. I do that where it's, it's, it's subconscious. It's, I'm not even consciously doing it. I will think about somebody or think about something and then all of a sudden they'll show up. So I think it's mm -hmm. more of my, my psychic abilities that create that rather than, rather than manifestation. But I, I don't, I don't necessarily like manifestation um, in the, in the way that it's being taught because we're not being taught to actually put in any of the work and you and I were talking about that in the pre-screening interview which is why we did this one is 
manifestation is great when we're putting our energy into it, when we're putting intention into it, when we're putting, you know, the, the desire and, and the emotions and, and all of that, right. Body, right. body, mind, and spirit. But if you just set it and forget it, it's not like a slow cooker. It can be right. But if you've got a slow cooker going or, or a crock pot, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. you put the, you put the meal in and you set it and you forget it. But every so often, you're still going to smell it. You're still going to go check on it. You're still going to think about it. You still had to prep it so that it can it can work, right? It's like planting a seed. You don't just plant a seed and then totally leave it. You have to nurture it. Right. And right. I think manifestation is the same way. Yes, you can create absolutely anything using manifestation, but I think it's more will than anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the way that some people teach manifestation it's it's like it's like the lazy way like you were saying where they just say you know make a vision board and and put all the things that you want to do or make yourself a list and and just think about it all the time and and you know watch movies where your people are in Greece or people are in Spain or wherever it is that you want to go and that's but if you're not really putting any energy towards that space that you really want to be at it, it's just going to be a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper. There's no real intrinsic value to you as to why you want to be in that space or why you want to go to that place or why you need this thing or why, you know, this per- particular, you know, uh, job or business, or whatever it is that's on your vision list or to do or whatever it is you want to manifest. If there's not really like a, I, I want to say like a hell yes to what it is that you're doing or something to justify it at least it i it may never manifest and what you may end up doing is just manifesting something that's actually the opposite of what you're actually looking for and i think that's another thing that that's instructors don't talk a lot about is manifesting the wrong thing or the subconscious is actually blocking the manifestation of the thing, because you haven't really dealt with the root of what's taken you so long to get to that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I have the perfect example of that from my own experience. And and I'll gladly share that for you and everybody watching is if you, you know, when I first started this business, right, I was there, there have been parts throughout this six year journey where I've been starving not starving literally but but you know financially where stuff's gone down and you know my husband almost died in 2016 and it was a big shock to my system and it was like whoa like what are we gonna do where are we getting money from and so at that point in time it's like the the desperation comes in right right now mentally emotionally energetically physically when we're having a very traumatic or a very stressful situation, right? We put desperation into that. Now I'm not saying don't acknowledge that desperation. Absolutely. I'm, I'm hundred percent for acknowledging how you're feeling and what's going on. It's not about ignoring it, but if you take action and you set, you're putting that desperation into that intention, right? I'm intentionally going to put out this offer to make money, but I'm desperate. So I'm pushing that desperation into that intention. People feel that energy right? Mm -hmm. Um, The universe feels that energy. So you can lay out the framework, you can do all the work, you can take the action steps towards manifesting a goal. But if your intention isn't where it needs to be, if your mindset and your emotions aren't where they need to be, you're actually putting that negative intention in there, right? And Mm -hmm. that's when you start to hear crickets, or it's it's not all the time, but if that's the scenario, right? Right, right. Um, right. And I've experienced that myself, where if I put that desperation in there without the, I'm doing this because I'm passionate about it. I'm doing this because it's going to help so many people. I'm doing this for this reason. No, I'm doing it because I'm desperate and I need money. Right. Right. And that's, that's a totally different intention. And again, you're right. Right. You may manifest something. But at that point, you manifest all the freebies. You manifest anybody who's not willing to do the work. They just want the free stuff or they just want your time and your energy. And you start giving more than you should be. So 
Mm-hmm. I, I wholeheartedly understand where you're coming with that. You do tend to manifest the complete opposite. Right. And really at the core, I believe that manifestation is what we are willing to believe in what is possible for us. If you have those limited beliefs in how far you can grow and what you can accomplish and whatever it is that you want, if you haven't cleared those blocks within yourself, the manifesting won't happen. And it's just a, it's a matter of, it's not, it's not magic. And I think a lot of people tend to group, you know, manifesting and the law of attraction, like it's this, it's like this magic potion thing. And there is no magic potion that goes with it. It's literally you tapping into your own energetic self and understanding that the blocks that you have within you is what blocks you from acquiring those levels in life that you choose to be at. And yes, are there times where we have disparities and we have, you know, situations where we wish that we weren't in, but we have to deal with them when we're there. Yes. But it doesn't mean that that's your forever. And that's when you you have to look in and and that's if, if anybody's listening and the biggest piece I think is always reminding yourself to look at you yourself it there's no amount of money out there there's no magic instructor out there that's going to give you the the secret ticket that's going to be like okay you take this ticket and open it up and put it in your agenda or put it on your wall and it's going to magically make your manifestation appear that's not it it's always going back to you it's always you doing your own work which then um opens up your energetic self, which, which alleviates or, or unblocks the certain things that it is that you're looking for. And if you don't release that negative energy and then you can't bring in the energy that's going to allow you to accomplish this thing over here. Yeah. Um, I always like to say our, our reality is our creation. We create our reality. Mm -hmm. We don't create the actions of others. We don't create the thoughts or the beliefs of others. We create our own reality. And depending on what's going on on our head, in our body, in our energy, and in all of that, we do create that outside reality. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, what ends up happening is, you know, we look and we're like, well, this happened. So I didn't get this. No, we create. And, and I wholeheartedly agree. We create those blockages. We create those barriers. Um, and that's our self-worth. That's our a lack of action. That's um, a lack of clarity, not knowing, right? Not feeling like we're good enough, not feeling like we're worthy, still having those things that are blocking us from actually taking those steps or doing it the right way. A lot of the time you will see, and and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this is, you know, you're, you're in a position, you're starting a business because I think a lot of our viewers are entrepreneurs. Sorry, I'm just fixing my screen here. It's not as high as it normally is. Um, A lot of our viewers are probably entrepreneurs, right? CEOs, coaches. Um, When you're in a position where you're hiring somebody to get you to a next level, right? And get in, in, especially in business, you hire somebody, you hire a coach, you love what they have to say. Maybe they're one of the coaches that are saying, hey, you know, um, five figures in, in 60 days or whatever it is, right? Right. And you go and you take their class and you see no results. There's two reasons for that. One, number one reason, which is why I started my own business mentoring company, <laughs> is that they're trying to get you to do it their way. They're not getting you to do it your way. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is you're not doing the work. You can say you're doing the work. I always said, and I've worked with many business coaches. I always said I was doing the work and I was, but I wasn't doing the work for me and I wasn't doing the work the way I needed to do it. Right. I didn't see the outcome. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So for a lot of people, it's, you know, you're trying to manifest, you're trying to create the life of your dreams, you're trying to create love and happiness and freedom. But at the same time, you're like, I'm doing all of this and nothing's going on. It's because you're one, you're not doing it the right way Two, your heart's not really in it the right way for you. And it's not even for anybody else. It's for you. I watched a very successful influencer um, do a video a few months ago and she says, is this just normal? Like, are people just not happy? Like what's, what's going on? I'm doing all the things and I'm not happy. This is not okay. Like I'm eating this and I'm drinking that and I'm going for walks and I'm doing all these things and I'm still not happy. And I'm like, because none of those things are what's meant to make you happy. You know, happiness is within, it's not all the things you're doing. It's not all the things that you're saying or the actions that you're taking. It's you. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's until people realize that. And it took me a long time to realize that. Like you think that, you know, if you uh, do this over here or you do this activity or you go on this trip or you buy this handbag or you drive this car, whatever it is, you think that that's what really makes you happy. But then you get the thing and you're like, well, wait a second. I don't really feel that I don't feel different when I have that thing. So Mm -hmm. I think once people realize that it's literally an internal thing, like if, if somebody doesn't want to have a million dollar business, somebody might look at them and be like, well, why wouldn't you want to have a successful million dollar business? Like you could go anywhere, you could do anything, you could buy whatever you wanted, you would have, you know, financial freedom. But what is but but what energetics is it going to take to run the million dollar business? And that right there may not be worth that person's internal happiness to want to do that for the rest of their life or for a set amount of years. So everyone has their own level of happy that they hopefully will learn to find and and acquire within themselves. But the sooner people understand that it has nothing to do with anything materialistic or anything, you know, yes, maybe doing a, you know, running a marathon, maybe some people like to do or climbing a mountain or whatever it is, like those things are going to be um, temporary. It's temporary um, elation, if you will, like it's just that, that, that accomplishment. But then after that, you're like, well, what's next? What am I going to do next? Because now I've accomplished this. Now what's next on my thing? Because I'm I'm continually chasing. I'm continuing to move the bar. Well, when do you leave the bar where it is? And be like, okay, this is where I am content. This is where, if this is what I had to do for forever, this is where I would be happy. Or if you died tomorrow, would it be okay? Would you have felt like you lived your life to the fullest? You've, you've said everything you need to say to your, 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 your family, your friends, you've, you've been a good person, all the things like, would you be like, Oh man, I didn't get to do that thing. Or why did I wait so long to do this? Or why did I, you know, it's like all of those, you don't want the regret involved in it. So I guess we kind of went off on a tangent there a little bit, but it's more about really just searching for that, that thing that you know that you truly, truly want to do and realize that you have everything that you need already here internally. It's just you have to clear away all the muck and the junk that people have told you year after year or for however long that maybe you couldn't accomplish this thing or that you're not worthy enough or all the things. And you just have to start chipping away at it and know that if you really keep pursuing what you're doing, it will, it will happen, but you have to work for it. It's not going to just fall Imagine. into the living room. Yeah. That's like uh, setting a goal. You, you were saying this and I was like, yes, because I, I, this drives me absolutely batshit crazy is when people say, I'll be happy when. 
-hmm. I'll be happy when I lose weight. I'll be happy when I run that marathon. I'll be happy when I have kids or my kids are grown or I'll be happy or I'll put myself first when my kids are grown or I'll be happy when I get to retire. Why aren't we happy now? Right. Right. I think the manifestation should be making ourselves happy on the journey. You can, I can sit here and I can say, I'll be happy when I lose 60 pounds because I probably could lose 60 pounds and be quite happy with that. But at the same time, when I do that, then I have to get rid of all the clothes that I have. I have to buy an entire new wardrobe. I have to, you know, maintain that weight loss and do all the other things. Right. So, why can't I be happy on the journey? Why can't I make the journey something that makes me happy along the way so that when I do get to that point, I already have another goal in mind, right? And I'm not defunct or down because, oh, I've reached this goal and it made me happy for a few minutes, but now it's like, oh, there's so much more to do. Because those are not societal norms. The societal norms are to keep pushing that we need to be and look like this thing over here and we you won't be happy until you get to that place or you know when you're speaking of weight loss people can lose weight all day long right like you can lose 60 pounds you can go get your new wardrobe you can go do all the things but if you don't change your mindset even at 60 pounds lost and you still haven't shifted that mindset you're not going to see yourself any differently. You're going to see yourself differently because you're having to go buy something new to wear because what you have won't fit you. But if the, if the mind shift doesn't happen, you might end up back gaining your weight because you haven't figured you, you haven't adjusted to that new energetic version of yourself, or you're just not going to enjoy where you are. And it's something that you worked so hard to get to but you're so unhappy at the mental aspect of what it entails that it's not, it doesn't serve you because it wasn't something that was addressed little by little as you went through the journey. And, and I don't think that that concept is, is practiced enough. It's more just about do this, do this, do this. You're going to be happy Buy this makeup, lose this weight, drink this beer, wear this, jeans, whatever it is, because it's going to make you this. It's the when then syndrome. When you do this, then this will happen. Well, when you do nothing about your goals and when you do nothing about, you know, how you want to live your life, then you might be miserable if you keep doing it that way. That's a good when then. But when you're do when you're doing it in comparison to like physical things, I think it just sets people up to be um, like almost to fail because they're not looking at it from again, internally and getting to the root of why they really want that thing. Like if you don't want to lose weight or you don't want to quit drinking or you don't want to quit smoking or you don't want to quit over shopping or doing the thing, you're not going to do it. Because you, do, you haven't reached that painful point of, I can't take this one more day, whatever it is, your job, your, you know, closet being a mess, your pan, your, your kitchen being a wreck or your, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what it is. You pick whatever you want, but it's getting to that point where it's more painful to stay in that space than it is to start step-by-step in, in changing and reframing the situation. Yep. Um, I just realized something. And what I realized is that manifestation is used as an excuse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, you know, how I said, I don't like manifestation because people will set it and forget it. Right. And just throw it into the universe. And, and it is what it is. Right. That's an excuse. And what ends up happening with that, for anybody watching or listening, what ends up happening with manifestation when you use it as an excuse is, I'm going to manifest this, this is my intention, I'm setting this intention, or I'm setting this goal, and, and I'm, you know, even if you do a spiritual ritual, or even use manifestation in whatever way, shape, or form, and then you set it and forget it, and 
you do nothing for it. You don't take the action. You don't do the work. You don't right take those steps. And then if it doesn't happen, Mm -hmm. and everybody listen to this, because this is a good part. If it doesn't happen, you get to blame the universe. You get to blame manifestation for not working because you didn't do the work. Manifestation Mm -hmm. is a crutch Mm -hmm. that people use to blame if what they're trying to create doesn't come to fruition. Right, right. And I think that's why it depends on, it depends on how someone goes about doing the thing, um, how they are manifesting, because, you know, like we talked about in the very beginning, you have to be very careful with the words that you say. And especially when you speak them out loud, you have to, it's like, it's not a joke. Like you have to be careful with what you say, be careful with what you wish for verbally, because just as much as you can manifest something great, you can also manifest something that's not so great because the universe doesn't know, doesn't understand. I don't want to say doesn't understand, but your words are simply vibrational airwaves, radio waves, whatever you want to call them. And it's, it's energetic. Like our vibrational beings will match what we put out will come back. So if we are continually operating at a low vibration, that's what we are going to get back. If we are operating at a higher vibration, we're open to many, much more, much more positive things than we are operating at a low vibration. So if you are, you know, always just looking at things from a, a less than perspective, that's what you're going to keep getting. And of course you're going to blame manifestation. Like this, this stuff is junk. It doesn't work. Who thought of this? This is stupid. You know, these things don't, who, who is in charge of this? Like you guys are just a bunch of, you know, wackadoos because you think that this is all true, but they, because they don't want to, they don't want to put the ownership on themselves because this is how they got themselves into the position that they're in now because they're just avoiding themselves because sometimes it, it's very difficult to move yourself out of painful situations or patterns, ha- bad habits that people get themselves into. It's not easy to get them out of those things. But if we teach the step little by little and they claim the ownership as themselves, then there is no blaming anyone. And I don't even like to say blame. It's just, it's just not going to, to, to pan out the way that you want it to. Um, But blame and accountability is the name of the game, right? You look at manifestation, right? So manifestation, it's blaming the universe. You don't hold yourself accountable, accountable because you did what you were told to do and just throw it out into the universe and leave it. Law of attraction is the same thing. Law of attraction is actually the reverse. It's guilt. It's shame. It's law of attraction teaches that if you say, I can't do this, that's what you're putting out there. Law of attraction is another one that I, I can't stand. Same with high vibrational. There, those, are, those are topics that I think have gotten out of control and the true meaning of them are no longer there. Law of attraction is an amazing thing when you use it properly. You saying, you know, I'm really struggling right now, or I don't want to struggle anymore. That's not putting that out there. That's putting that you're ready to change out there, right? right. If you right. say, I can't, I won't, I'm not going to, or I'm feeling gross. It's not always about, you know, so manifestation removes you of the guilt. Law of attraction provides you with the guilt. And then high vibrational just drains your energy. Um, I'm a, I'm a stickler for high vibrational and, um, or speaking up about it, I should say, because a lot of people use high vibrational in that terminology. I'm a very low vibrational person most of the time because I'm calm. I'm, I'm quiet. You know what? Even if I'm doing my work and, and putting my best into it and I'm excited about it, I'm still not at a high vibration because I associate even anger is the high vibration, right? And you think of the day 
if you go out and you are celebrating with family, right? And you've had the greatest day and it's all been good, all positive. You come home, you are exhausted, Mm -hmm. exhausted, right? Because your energy level, your vibrational level has been too high all day. The same goes with negativity. If you have had a day where you've been crying or you've been upset or you've been angry, it raises that energetic vibrational level and it drains you. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a stickler for pointing that out. Um, I don't, if, if nobody agrees with me or disagree with me either way, I'm totally fine. I just had to put that out there that being high vibrational all the time, whether negative or positive is a leading cause of burnout that will guarantee burn you out when you are trying to be a higher vibrational vibration than you should be we should be and look at the monks right calm relaxed mm-hmm. right they're not high high vibrational they're mo- one of the most spiritually happy people in the world and they are not high vibrational they're centered right right and i think that for me is is the ideal right and i also i also believe though that when like you said, you know, just because we are, we are calm because I can, I can, I, I, sim- I, I understand what you're saying about just because I'm not bouncing off the walls doesn't mean that I'm not excited to do something. And, mm-hmm. but I think we also, if we were to gauge ourselves on a, an energetic, you know, if somebody hooked us up to an energy reading machine, right? Because we have that, that, I guess, anchor of, of happy or joy or just clear um, uh, good goodness in what we are doing and our vibe that we are putting out, like our goal for your, you know, your show and your business and everything is, is very, um, what I would call, you know, good, you know, good hearted and, and intrinsically a positive type of job, career, all the things, you are going to um, resonate at a higher vibration on a, on a machine level, not necessarily showing like on the outside that you're like, you know, balloons and grinning from ear to ear and jumping all, you know, but it's, it's when people are constantly like, you know, like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, you know, everything is just monumental it's you know and and yes can people have chemical imbalances and we can go we could that's a whole nother that's a whole nother episode but when someone is constantly in that in that state of like they're just dragging their feet and they're in the drudge and they're they just don't know how to pull themselves up meaning like elevating themselves that's when i i think that they need to do things whether it's you know, maybe some meditation where they can clear their head and they can just, you know, learn to open themselves up or, you know, use crystal therapies or do something that's going to help bring their vibrational self up. Because if they don't experience what that feels like, they're going to think that what they feel is the norm because that's their day-to-day go-to. That's how they, that's how they've lived and survived. So when they, when you try to introduce something different, sometimes a lot of people, when they're not used to that vibrational shift, it's very difficult for them to do because their body doesn't want to do it. You know, if someone's never meditated before and they say, well, I can't meditate because I can't sit there for 20 minutes with my eyes closed and just doing nothing. I'm not asking you to sit for 20 minutes. You can sit for one minute. You can just stand with your eyes closed or don't even close your eyes, but learn to feel what it feels like to tap into yourself because we can do, we can raise and lower our vibration, our vibration whenever we choose, but it's teaching people to do that and to understand that you are always in control of yourself. Yep. That's absolutely true. Um, when people are struggling and, and, you know, depression or, or just really down thoughts like your, that is, you know, emotional, right? That's, that's your emotional and mental brain going, I'm not doing this. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm stuck here. And 
the the spectrum for me is not a vibration it's more of that just the the energy that we're putting into it so i guess technically a vibration right where right. you're drowning in sorrow right if you're if you're drowning in negativity or you're hyped up like drowning on negativity is like the equivalent of being you know depressed right mm-hmm. where being hyped up on you know, high vibrational, positive energy all the time is being high, right? Like you're yeah. either high or you're drunk. One of the two, like th- that's kind of like the range of those two, right? Is one is drunk and toxic. The other one's high and toxic mm-hmm. where again, being in that middle. And I think that, um, introducing to people who are in that low, that low negative spot introducing, like you said, that reconnection to their selves, right? Reconnecting them to who they truly are, not what they're feeling, not what they're experiencing, but who they are is, is vital because you are correct. We absolutely have control all the time. We just don't realize it. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, society has conditioned us with things like manifestation, with things like law of attraction, toxic positivity, cancel culture, um, all of the things that we're experiencing now, it's, we're giving everybody the out. We're giving everybody the excuse to blame how they are on everybody else. It's, it's either their fault or it's my fault or it's their fault or it's my fault. There is no in between that we're talking about. And I think that talking about manifestation, the way that we're talking today, it's really giving that idea that we do have that control. We do have the ability to remove the shame, to remove the guilt, to remove the blame, to take accountability for ourselves and realize that we have our own minds. Our reality, like I said, is based on our mindset, but our reality is like a garden. It is those seeds, right? Mm -hmm. We're planting the seed in our garden. And depending on how we're tending that garden, depending on whether we're allowing other people to put seeds in that garden or right. different situations in that garden, we get to decide how it grows, where it grows, who gets to help grow it. We get that choice, right? Eleanor Roosevelt and her quote that, you know, the only time people can make you feel inferior is when you let them. Right. Right. right? Manifestation works the same way. You have to be doing the work. You have to be taking accountability for the action behind it, the intention behind it, and not just setting and forgetting. Right. And also being realistic with how long you are giving yourself. Because if you sit here and tell me, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a a million dollars by the end of September. I don't know. I mean, that's, that, that, that would be great. It, it kind of sounds like a pipe dream unless you maybe win a lotto or something, or you have something really, you know, burning over here on the, on the back burner that we don't know about, but it's unrealistic. And even, you know, people who try to do these, these things, you know, Oh, I want to redecorate my whole house in one week. Okay. Well, if you have like a, a redecorating a HGTV channel that's going to come in with, you know, a hundred people and redo the whole thing. Yeah. You could do that in a week, but you're not going to do that in a week. And we, we overextend ourselves in what we think we are capable of. And we underestimate the actual time that it is going to take to do this thing. And it, it just, and then we set ourselves up for failure. Then it doesn't happen. Then we don't make, we don't meet the criteria of that goal. And then we're like, oh, well, we failed. And this is why I failed. And I don't, now I don't want to do this again because, and then, you know, you go, then you get back into that downward spiral again, where had you said, okay, I'm going to take three months to do this. And then you break it down over the three months. Okay. In week one, this is what needs to happen. A little che- a checklist of this is what we have to do. And then in week two, this is what we're doing. And then by week three, so it's very systematic. And that, in my opinion, is a lot more realistic to do than just throwing this random goal out there. And I mean, does it even make sense? Like what you're trying to do? Um, and I think that's where people get tripped up is that they, they try to take these, you know, these new year's resolutions, everybody does on January 1st. And then by time, you know, by February 2nd, 
Everybody's given up on the gym. Nobody cares about what they're eating. Nobody cares about the goal or thing that they said they were going to stop doing or doing or the not do list or whatever you want to call it. And by May, nobody cares. Or they're beating themselves up over the fact that they once again created these New Year's goals that they don't do. So it's it's giving that that culture of then stop doing it that way. If it's not working for you, then don't do it that way. Because you're just continually building the failure button on your end. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something and I totally lapsed and forgot what I was going to say. I was going to add on to that. Um, it's, it's crazy. The amount of, oh yes, here we go. Um, you were talking about realistic expectations, right? A realistic mm -hmm. right. Uh, manifestations. Right. I would even further that. And you know, we all, we've had this discussion before on other episodes, we all have weaknesses and weaknesses aren't weaknesses in, in the traditional sense, right? Mm -hmm. There are things that I can do that I'm not great at. There are things that I absolutely can't do. I cannot for the life of me roll my R's and it pisses me off because I love the way it sounds. And I want to speak other languages, but I sound like just broken when I'm trying it. Um, but I can't do that. And I've tried for many years to do that. And I can't do that. That doesn't mean I can't speak the language. It just means I have to do it my way. Mm -hmm. Whether that sounds funny or doesn't sound funny, it doesn't matter. There is still that possibility, right? There are people who want to run a marathon who, you know, maybe you can't walk, maybe you can't run. That's okay. Think of a different way to do that. There's people who want to be, you know, president or prime minister or a queen or a princess or whatever, you know, be it in a different way, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to marry into the royal family or, or go into politics. Maybe do it in a different way where you're still getting the same satisfaction. You're getting the same, you know, recognition, whatever it is that your, that your goal is, just change it up a little bit manifestation isn't about reaching for, you know, oh, I want to have a castle in, in Scotland. No, I don't. While they're gorgeous and absolutely I'd love to, I love Canada and I love being where I am. Right. Um, I want to be a queen, but I'm a queen in my own house. I don't need right. to, you know, put that out there. I've already achieved that. So knowing what your limitations are, Knowing that your limitations, if you think outside the box, aren't really limitations. If you want to run a marathon and you can't walk or run, go into a marathon that has wheelchairs or scooters or, or what have you, right? Do a race, whatever that looks like. There are different opportunities available to you, regardless of what your strengths and your weaknesses are, or your limitations. Mm -hmm. I would say limitations more than weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. They're not weaknesses, they're limitations. Um, one, one limitation that I have, or, or my shadow side, because we all have, you know, light and dark, yeah. is that I am volatile and vindictive. I can be absolutely filled with rage. I know how to control it. But if I wasn't that way, I wouldn't have the confidence to know that I can protect my family. I can protect myself if I need to, mm -hmm. right? So it's, what are my limitations? Well, my limitation is that I'm not going to be volatile and vindictive and rageful all the time because I'm a sweetheart and I don't need to be that person. But if I need to, right, mama bear is going to come out. Right, right. And I think also that when we don't or when we're not willing to own up to what we would call the shadow side of ourselves, which is the, the side that maybe um, limits us from doing something because it, it's kind of like the, the bad ego, you know, telling you that you can't do this or it makes you fearful or it does, you know, all the things that the shadow, just imagine the shadow. If somebody out there listening doesn't understand what we're talking about with shadow work, it's that part of you that is just kind of always over there in the corner that doesn't, nobody sees because you keep it hidden really well. And it's just, it's kind of the dark like. side. 
or that you don't like, things about you that you don't wouldn't necessarily put out there for everyone to see. Um, those are some things that might hinder your manifestation process because it's going to limit your thought process. It's going to remind you of the things that you think are going to limit you in doing the thing. You're not good yeah. enough. You're not cut out for that. You'll never make it to that thing. You'll never be able to do that thing because you're not that talented. Nobody's going to listen to you. You're not the right size for this particular thing, whatever it is. It's the shadow side of us that limits or that also puts that lens on for us, whether we like it or not. And the, the sooner we are able to recognize the difference between the shadow version of ourselves being in charge and the, and the person that wants to do the good is in charge. It's like the, the two, you know, the, the native American, the wolves, you know, we've got wolf over here and wolf over here, which one, the one who you feed more is stronger, right? So which part of us are we going to feed that's going to be out in the world doing the thing, manifesting the things that we want? If you're going to fuel the side of you that has all of these limitations or perceived limitations, then that part of you is going to keep the other part from thriving and, and being successful in the world, whatever that means to you. And I'm again, I'm not tying this to monetary value. I'm tying this to your intrinsic and, and happiness in how you wake up every day and how you greet every day that you are here, your breath. You wake up and you're breathing. That is a gift. That is truly a gift. You being able to look outside and see the beautiful sky and feel the wind on your face, that's a gift. And there's no money. There's no, nobody charges for that every morning when you wake up. You're not charged for every breath that you take. You're not charged for every time you want to go outside in your bare feet and stand on the ground and look up at the sky and just be in awe of this planet because it's beautiful and they're free. It's free but you have to find that value in doing something like that. Looking at a sunset, watching a sunrise, watching the flock of birds fly in the sky. I know I probably sound cliche and cheesy right now, but looking at patterns in the clouds, finding shapes in the clouds, like, you know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that right there, if somebody were to take that away from you tomorrow, it would be, it wouldn't be good for me because I love to do that stuff. I am constantly in awe of life because it's not, doesn't have to be here the same way tomorrow as it is today. Yep. Life is a gift. Yes. It absolutely and utterly is. And I, I will never dis, dis, discredit or discount or disagree with that at all. Life is absolutely a gift. I think that when talking about shadow and light, when it comes to manifestation is we have to incorporate the two. When I'm making decisions, when I'm, you know, doing anything in my life, I'm incorporating the two. That shadow side is my strength, mm -hmm. right? My right. strength doesn't come specifically from the light side. It comes from the dark where I learn to overcome, where I find my courage, where right. I take all of those limiting beliefs or limitations or, or traumatic events. And I use them for my benefit because they've happened. I can't change that they've happened. Right. right. I can't change the fact that I've had these thoughts what I can do is change how they impact me and change them going forward. Instead of saying, you know, this made me weak, this makes me stronger and find out how. And then when you start putting that dual energy, right, that gray scale energy, the one where you're centered and you're in the midst of all of it, when you take that energy and you put that into your manifestations, Mm -hmm. You have access to the world. You have mm -hmm. access to everything the universe wants to provide you with if you weren't shut off. 
right? If you're too high in your positivity and your light, you're going to shut yourself off because you're higher and mightier than everything. And I've seen it and I've, I've encountered it. That is spiritual bypassing at its finest. Right. But if you are so low and you're depressed and you're drowning in that negativity, you're not going to see it. You're not going to claim or achieve any of that because that's the energy you're putting in. Right. That's the intention you're putting in. Right. Right. Um, And I think that when you find that centered ability, that humbleness, that, you know, knowing who you are and the confidence and the strength of being who you are and you start manifesting that way, you find true happiness where, Mm -hmm. again, even if you're in the positivity and light and you're finding success and you're finding all this greatness and your life looks amazing, because these are some of the people I, I work with is if your life looks on the outside, like it is absolutely and utterly amazing and people look up to you and they want your life, but you are not happy. You're not centered. You're too far up or you're too far down. You're not centered. Mm -hmm. And being centered is one of the most important things. Right. And I love that you have your musings of, of the audacious because you know, you look at people and you're like, how you, did you just seriously have the audacity to say that to me? And I've actually asked people that. And you know what? Maybe we do need to have audacity. Maybe we do need to say, and that's, you know what? Honestly, that's one of the reasons I started the show is I wanted to talk about the hard things. I wanted to talk about the things that I've been ridiculed and I've been rejected for talking about the value of negativity, right? And how to turn that into a positive, the toxic positivity, the cancel culture, the, you know, um, bullshit practices, pardon my language, of manifestation and how people are using it as a crutch. Same with law of attraction, right? Meditation, grounding, all of those things that should be helpful. Mm -hmm. but people have abused the way of teaching them right yeah It, it it's very true and I think again I'm I'm hoping that this conversation gives people the permission to stop looking for permission with other people and other platforms and literally just learn how to reconnect to themselves and find that audacious part of themselves that needs to be bold, that needs to stand up for itself, that needs to be recognized, but recognized from your own perspective inward. Not, I don't need anyone else's um, permission. I don't need someone else's, you know, uh, approval validation. as to and validation as to if I should, you know, come up with this topic for my podcast, or if you don't like my podcast, then don't listen to it. It's like, I don't, your validation is not going to control my happiness because that's not going to end up well for me in the end. If we learn to control and validate our own happiness, then all of the outside peripheral things that people are trying to throw at us that, that are going to, that people say are going to make us happy are not going to have any value for us because we know intrinsically what makes us happy. And it's finding the audacity to admit that and live by those standards within ourselves, and not really care what, you know, what current trend is happening over here with what people are supposed to do with their life or what diet they're on or what, you know, like who, like if I'm not on the bandwagon of who's being canceled this week, am I going to get canceled? Should have nothing to do with me. I wasn't the one that put myself in that position. But again, we're, we're, we're doing, you know, it's that thing where people are just on the bandwagon with whatever it is going on over here. Sheeple. Yes. The sheeples. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. I, I don't. And I, and, and maybe that, you know, I don't know, maybe that throws darts my way, but I've, I've never been one to be in the, the masses of, um, how do you want to call this? Like, I feel like I've always done kind of my own thing and maybe that's, what's taken me so long to do the thing. Black sheep. Right. As they would call it. Right. I can't stand sheeple. 
Uh, you know, half my family are sheeple and, and I, I've had this happen to me. I've been cancel cultured by my own family and half my family has not once talked to me about the situations that created the cancel, um, but they all follow one person, mm -hmm. right? They all listen to the one person who said cancel her and then all of them just followed along like sheep, mm -hmm. right? So I'm very against the sheeple mentality, but that's what society is creating. It's creating sheeple. It is absolutely and utterly each new wave of positivity movement, cancel culture, um, law of attraction, manifestation, all of this are creating sheeple. It is creating a lack of confidence, a lack of clarity, a lack of awareness on our own beliefs and our own personal power and the way that we express ourselves. I don't need validation. Absolutely not. Do I want it half the time? Sure. I think it is absolutely ridiculous how people who go online and do horrible things are getting viral sensation when the people who are actually trying to help and trying to teach and, and help and, and bring awareness to non-judgment and agree to disagree and all of these things are the ones who are who are being quieted or ignored in the background mm -hmm. and it's it's a sheeple mentality right yeah and just creating elevated levels of fear which again don't really help someone who is already in a state of things are not working what am i supposed to do they're already down in the dumps and then you start going into this whole you know if you don't believe this over here then your life is really going to sink to the floor yes. so it's it's just I don't know like I I just I think that I've learned to continually go back to myself and when people are saying hurtful things or they're saying things that don't align with my thoughts and beliefs or whatever it is I just quietly go back to myself if it means I sit in meditation or if I go for a walk or I listen to music that uplifts me, whatever it is, but I have to, I have to have those tools to know, to bring me back to my center, not your center, not the person next to me, not my husband's, not my kids, not my dogs, not my mom's, but it has to bring me back to me. It's 100%. always, always back to yourself. And it's not a selfish thing because if we don't take care of us first, we can't help and be a part of uplifting someone else that needs help. And when you learn how to do that for yourself, it's literally like you have found a gold mine because you are able to, you know, pull from that mine whenever you need it. And you don't have to go anywhere else for it. You don't have to look in validation, or you don't have to look at this person over here who's constantly talking in your ear. Well, I need them to tell me something else so that I can build myself back up again. No, learn to build your own house when it crumbles. Yeah, sorry, I was just taking notes of TikToks I'm going to be doing <laughs> on this episode to promote this episode because it is. Um, if you, for anybody watching or catching the replay of this episode, understand that a good 90% of the people that you follow who are successful on social media, in movies, in um, CEOs and tycoons, 90% of them, and I haven't done statistics, I'm, this is my own opinion, 90% of them <laughs> have manifested that success at a cost of their own happiness. Yeah. Look at how many suicides, look at how many depression, drugs and alcohol, sex abuse, look at how many of these people have withered their life away because it came at a cost of their own happiness. They went outside of their center and, for, and not forgot who they are, but lost who they are in the opinions of everybody else, in the sheeple mentality, in all of us saying, why are you unhappy? Your life is perfect. You have no reason to be unhappy. You're just a loser, right? And all of that, right? Yep. Because unhappiness is perceived as weakness and it's not. 
unhappiness is a cost that people pay when they're not being true to themselves. Mm -hmm. And just being able to recognize, you know, when someone is in that place of just like, they're not happy. I think it helps when they have, you know, questions in front of them and they're like, okay, why in this moment right now, not five months ago, but right now in this moment, why am I feeling these feelings? What just happened? Did someone just say something to me that triggered something within me to make me feel this way? Because remember, like you said earlier, the Eleanor Roosevelt, no one has the, no one has the power to make you feel inferior, but yourself, because if you're allowing that person and what they said to affect you, then you've allowed it. You can just, you can accept, you can tell me all, you can sit here and, and, curse me to the end of the earth. Right. And I can sit and listen and I can sit and listen with an open mind. Okay. Keep going, keep saying it, keep going, but it doesn't mean that I have to internalize it and say, Oh yeah, you know what, what Melissa just said to me, she's right. Yeah, I am that. And then you go on. But at that point, when someone is really that unhappy, if they can just sit there and maybe ask themselves, what just happened to me? Why am I having this reaction to it? What can I do right now to make myself feel better? And how is this going to affect me an hour from now? Or is, is this really going to matter a day from now? And if you, they can answer maybe those four questions, maybe they could bring themselves out of that disparity in an hour or less but instead we're just taught to wallow in it and to really over over analyze it and why is this person or mad at me it. and what or ignore it or what can i do to 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 redeem myself like what can i tell them that will make them like me more and what can i do and how can i drain myself more to some people are just not going to like you that's it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just some people are not going to like you. They're not going to like what you say. They're not going to like what you do, no matter what you do. You could you you could stop world hunger and they're still going to find something about you that they don't like. Yep. So you got to learn how to find the happiness within. Okay. And when you can do that. <clears throat> Yep. You always Change. have something to go back to. Change yep. yourself. If you not no, I don't even want to say change yourself because it's not changing anything about you. It's it's changing it's how you, you express yourself. Exactly. It's you learning how to manipulate and to and to really grab a hold of your thoughts to not let them be the runaway train. You yep. control the train. You control, you're in the driver's seat. You, nobody else can, can tackle anything up there in the headspace, but you, I can talk to you all day long, but if you're not willing to take what I'm saying and internalize it for however you are going to interpret it, then, you know, you're just going to be going in circles, but we have control over ourselves. Yep. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we get going here? Um, I think just the takeaway is don't, don't settle. Don't allow yourself to remain stuck. You are not in quicksand. And there is a version of you that can do the thing. And don't ever underestimate what you are capable of doing because we can do whatever we put our, our minds to doing and be audacious and be bold about how you want to live your life because we don't get a replay. Yep. I love that. And I couldn't agree more. So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, for anybody watching or catching this episode, Please, if you want to get a hold of Caroline or myself, you can do so. Our links are in the description. Um, our sponsor today, True North Tribe, go and check out um, Musings of the Audacious, day one. It's a four-day course. Go check that out. 
Um, like and follow the show, share, you know, the more the merrier. Uh, if you want to be a guest speaker or if you want a topic featured on the show, let us know. Get involved. You can always reach out. Our inbox is always open. You can find us at justalivetv.com or you can search Just Alive in just about every social media platform and find us. Go give us a like and a follow and a share. And we greatly appreciate it. I'm your host, Melissa Crutchler. Um, Caroline, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. This was a beautiful conversation. And um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So manifest away. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, just a family. That is the end of our episode. I will see all of you on the next. Bye. Bye.